there's something notable about the fact that the three major architects of the Gothic in the late 18th century are all what we would today call homosexual or gay. Matthew Lewis, Horace Walpole, and William Beckford. Now, of course, the category of homosexuality doesn't exist until the 19th century, so they could never have known themselves as homosexual or gay writers. And I think it's probably safer to talk about them as queer writers in historical terms. Uh, now, whatever they called themselves, there's very clearly a sense that these were writers who engaged in same-sex attraction, same-sex desire, and possibly even same-sex sex, sexual activity. So the story of Gothic starts with Horace Walpole, the author of The Castle of Otranto in 1764. And it's quite clear from his letters that Walpole nurtured a long time, very passionate attraction to his cousin, Henry uh, Seymour Conway, who was considerably younger than him. Now, Conway in uh, the spring of 1764, that's before Walpole writes The Castle of Otranto, was in some sort of political trouble. He'd been a soldier and he'd had a position as groom of the bedchamber in the court, but due to criticism of the government, he loses this position in the spring of 1764. What happens as a response is that William Guthrie, who is a kind of government hack, writes a public pamphlet uh, against Walpole and accuses Walpole of being passionately in love with his own cousin, um, accuses Walpole of being effeminate, and uh, it becomes quite a, a public scandal. Walpole, in turn, writes a very touching letter to Seymour, saying, uh, they have nothing other to say than that I'm in love with you. A kind of conceding in fact, to the, uh, the accusation. Now, there's very little in Walpole's text that suggests a same-sex desire, although what critics have pointed out is that the trope of incest that features in the Castle of Otranto and also in The Mysterious Mother is a kind of coded reference to a much more unspeakable desire for the late 18th century, which is a same-sex desire. We can also think about the queerness of Horace Walpole in relation to the architecture of Strawberry Hill, a major player in the Gothic revival and architecture in the late 18th century. The architecture of Strawberry Hill, as Lytton Strachey was later to point out, was queer more than beautiful. Horace Walpole was attracted to the Gothic because it was queer more than beautiful. And there's certainly a sense in which Holp, Walpole and his group of male friends, bachelors, shared a taste for the Gothic style. There's also a sense in which these bachelor architects and writers and antiquaries thought of themselves and their houses as the children of Strawberry Hill. So what happens is a kind of queer family romance that generates between Walpole as a single reproductive father and these other bachelors with their Gothic houses built in the Gothic style seeing their own works as, as the offspring of Strawberry Hill.